Hey, Rob, we talked to your uh, dad and your uh, high school football coach, and they both said uh, that they didn't let you play football until 10th grade. And obviously, while that clearly worked out, um, what did ninth grade Rob have to think about that? Uh, well, I, st I started freshman year, so I started ninth grade year. Uh, you know, you got to be careful what, what you actually listen to, uh, <laughs> listen to from my dad. So uh, <laughs> I started freshman year. I played uh, freshman uh, football and then varsity the rest of three years. But uh, yeah, so I was, I mean, it was obviously new to the game, but, you know, just learn as much as I could and, you know, go from there. Thank you. Next question comes from Miguel. Miguel, you may ask your question. Hey, hi, Rob. This is Miguel with the Southern of Latin America Network. As one of the most experienced players in this offensive line, what advice have you given to the younger players who are playing in a Super Bowl for the first time? Uh, you know, um, it's kind of the same stuff that uh, that Whitworth has been, you know, preaching the rest of the time. It's Games like these are a heightened sense of urgency, but it's it's still football. It's you know we had the same talk in our first round of playoffs and our second round, and then in the NFC Championship game, like we're still doing the same thing we've been doing all year. So go like no, no one's asking anyone to do anything differently. Uh, you know it's just uh, the biggest you know the biggest game of all. But at the end of the day, it's still football. So you know we're uh, you know trust your process, do what you've been doing all year that's made you made you successful and. You know, keep going on that. Next question comes from Greg Beecham. Greg, you may ask your question. Hey, Rob, you're one of the three St. Louis Rams left on this roster. Uh, as you look back over your career, is there anything that's still a continuity through that entire process of you starting as a rookie and, and being to where you are now in Los Angeles? Is, or does it feel like you played for two different franchises? Are there, is there anything that you can connect? from that, from your whole career? Um, you know, honestly, it all kind of blends together a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously things are run differently with, with different uh, head coaches and things like that. So, um, you know, there's going to be continuity in the fact that you're still playing football, but, uh, you know, I guess the way certain things are run, whether it's by, you know, your head coach, offensive coordinator, ours happens to be, you know, one and the same pretty much. So uh, it's, um, it's all, it's all pretty similar, but it's just, uh, you know, there are some some key differences. And uh, if I can get one more. Uh, sure. You, you've, had, you've had certain years where there were injuries on the line. You got hurt in the only time in 2019, and, you know, the Rams had to put guys out there who had not played together a lot and just hope for the best. What's it meant this year to have an offensive line that's only missed five combined starts and has been really solid from week one to week 18? Yeah, no, it's been good. You know, I think, uh, I think one of the best things about our room is that guys – generally like really actually like each other um and so no matter what the combination is whether it's you know obviously with a, you know me missing a couple games of covid a couple different injuries here and there but you know for the most part we've all been all been pretty good and we all like each other and we all you know we all work the same way so we all know how each other's how like how everyone else likes to play and guys certain tendencies and things like that so um it's all been really good. It really has. And to not have, you know, as, as many, you know, injuries and our different, uh, you know, starting combinations has been obviously a great thing just because you can, you know, you really get that in-game experience about, you know, how the guy next to you plays. Thanks, man. Next question comes from Stacy Dales. Stacy, you may ask your question. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Stacy Dales, NFL Network. Great to see you. Super happy for you. Um, in this journey, um, I have a couple questions, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, you know, your head coach has talked a lot about the last Super Bowl. He didn't think he handled the game plan well, the two weeks leading up to it. What, what, what have you noticed about the way he's handled this time around as far as if the preparation, the installation, as you get ready for Sunday? Yeah, no, I think we've done a really good job this week. It was um, kind of slowly putting together the game plan, fine-tuning things instead of kind of mass – putting everything in and then having kind of doing the same thing over, you know, the different days. Um, but, you know, definitely this year, it's been kind of just slowly putting stuff together and then seeing kind of what works, what, what might not work as well. So what we want to trim down where, where we want our focus to be. And, um, you know, I think you know, overall guys have done a really good job and it's been a really good, uh, 
really good couple weeks of preparation. We're going to cap this thing off uh, the right way tomorrow. And then, uh, you know, obviously on Saturday, get ready for this whole thing. For sure. Brian was telling me yesterday, y'all don't feel like you've actually played your best game yet, which is shocking because you're pretty damn good. Um, but the evolution has been really interesting with Matthew, your quarterback. When did you guys start feeling that evolution to where this offense was what you wanted it to be? Because it just keeps seeming to get better and better and better. Uh, you know, I think it first kind of started in training camp. I mean, the way Matthew came in with his, you know, obviously years of experience, but just as his style of leadership, his style of competitiveness, you know, you really just got a, uh, you know, you really understood kind of who he was as a person right away. And that's something that's an absolute credit to him. But, uh, you know, I would agree with Brian, you know, as always as, you know, offensive linemen, I think we're all uh, at times <laughs> optimistically negative uh, sometimes. So like one or two plays <laughs> kind of ruin you in a practice or not, not ruin you, but you know, those are the ones you really think about and it seems like, Oh, what can I do better? What can I do there? So we're always chasing a perfect game. Realistically, it's never going to happen. Um, but that's what makes, uh, you know, the guys in our room, you know, pretty special is that everyone wants to get out there and, you know, not only do it for themselves, but do it for the guy next to them. Like I was alluding to in the previous question, like, like guys actually really like each other on this team and this is a very connected team and that's something that you can't you can't fake and um, I think it all comes from a really good spot. Thanks Rob. Yeah thank you. Next question comes from Stu Jackson. Stu you may ask your question. Hey Rob what's it been like this first season working with coach Carberry and uh, in what way uh, can either you guys or you know external observers fans whomever kind of see uh, his impact and the way that he's shaped you guys as far as your performance up to this point? Uh, yeah, with uh, with Carbs, it's been great. You no, know, I think it's been, uh, you know, a lot of learning on both sides. Obviously, Car this being Carbs' first year as a, uh, you know, a head headline coach in the NFL. And, you know, it, it, you get a chance to work with, work with Andrew. You know, that's just an absolute special thing that's going to take you, uh, you know, kind of elevate your your game much faster just because you got 16 years of experience I mean you can't like I said you know you can't buy that um but uh you know everything's been good I think uh, you know everyone kind of clicks and uh even when there is I don't want to say disagreements but uh you know conversations you know it all comes out very positive um and you know we just have a really good culture in the O-line room thank you thanks too Next question comes from Dylan Hernandez. Dylan, you may ask your question. Hey, Rob. Uh, you know, you mentioned Stafford earlier. Obviously, he's made some big plays and big moments in these in these playoffs. Just kind of wondering, you know, be, before those plays, when he's kind of in the huddle, what's his demeanor like? What kind of energy does he give off? Uh, you can kind of tell he's just a, you know, he's he's a true ultimate competitor. You know, it really shows up when he, you know, like it kind of gets in crunch time. You can tell there's no waiver, there's no falter, there's no doubt anything like that. And that just kind of spreads out to the guys in the huddle because, you know, you're going to go out there and, you know, obviously you want to give your best, you know, but, uh, you know, you want to go do it for guys like that. And, uh, you know, to have him lead our huddle is, uh, has, has, has been absolutely awesome. You know, it's, uh, he's a special guy back there and it's, you know, it's been a lot of fun working with him this year. You know, Cooper Cup mentioned earlier this week that he thought that Stafford kind of likes making the difficult play, you know, that, maybe that unusual throw or, you know, I guess he's always saying stuff like, let's do something cool. Sure. Do you see that as well? Uh, well, most of the time it's kind of happening behind me. So I kind of, I'll watch him on film every now and again, but uh, most of the time I'm usually staring at, you know, me or, you know, if I'm, you know, wa you know watching the O-line. So uh, maybe I missed some of it, but, you know, there's definitely some things that flash on film that you're like, well, that is impressive, in impressively done. And, you know, there's not a lot of people doing what he's doing, um, you know, to the level of, you know, his play. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's been fun to watch and fun to be a part of. And, you know, we're looking forward to capping this thing off. Thank you. Next question comes from Susie Colbert. Susie, you may ask your question. Hey, Bella. Hey, Susie. A couple things that are connected. First, what did you learn from the last experience that's regarding how to navigate the extra energy expended in this pregame and just the excitement when you walk into a Super Bowl stadium? Uh, you know, it's a great question. It really is. Um, 
I think that kind of stem, you know, it starts for, you know, you get two weeks to prepare for a single game and, you know, you haven't done that since bye week really. And during bye week, you know, the last thing you're usually thinking about is actually football. Um, it's still in the back of your mind, but it's not in the forefront. And for this whole two weeks, it's all football. It's all this game. And it's kind of, you know, obviously having the experience of last time of kind of controlling, controlling your ups, controlling your downs and just going steady, steady throughout and just kind of building building days and stacking them on uh, on one another but it's uh it is truly a skill and it's um, something I think we've you know done a really good job and when in terms of pregame it's uh, I mean, you know maybe it's sometimes convincing yourself that hey this is you know I've done what 20 pregames this year however many with preseason or however many it is to how many games we played to this point but uh you know I've done it that many times and in the basis of it it's the exact same thing um so you just you just take it you know, as normal as possible and you go out there and you know you play your game the way you're supposed to play it so looking back at week four i believe it was home game cardinals was the hottest game so far this season sounds like it should be about the same temperature so especially for you guys in the trenches how do you approach that in this game uh you know it's southern california it's not too bad you know um even when it's sunny out, it's not, you know, humid. You know, Witt was uh, t- talking about today, you know, being a, a little bit of a hotter day today, and he's in sweats and long sleeves talking about the uh, <laughs> the Louisiana heat of, you know, when that when that air just has water in it and, then you know, as the humidity is just, you know, pumping. But uh, it won't be too bad. It's something we've been around here. Obviously, we've been playing all our, all our home games here. So whether it's hot, you know, cold for California standards, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you're still out there and expect to go play well. Awesome. Best of luck. Thank you. Next question comes from Catherine Fitzgerald. Catherine, Catherine, you may ask your question. Hey, Rob. This is Catherine from the Buffalo News. Um, this is a bit random, but Aaron Cromer just got hired by the Bills this week, and I know you overlapped with him. His son, Zach, is still working with y'all. So I was wondering what you've learned from each of them as coaches. Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've learned a ton f- uh, from, well, we call Aaron just Chrome. So, uh, but yeah, you know, we've, uh, I've learned a lot from him. Obviously, me being a, you know, semi younger guy, obviously younger than I am now, uh, when, when he first came in, you know, I've definitely learned a lot of, you know, I think he teaches a lot of good fundamentals and there's, there's clear directive of what he expects. And, uh, you know, when, when things are clear, it's uh it's easier to go get that done and so i think he's an excellent coach and i think it's an awesome hire and you know i'm I'm super super happy for him awesome thank you yep thank you next question comes from tom friend tom you may ask your question hi how you doing man i'm curious the gps system the the tracking system during practice load management how do you i mean you laugh at that What, what is it like i mean what's it like living like that uh, I'm, I guess I don't understand your question. Well, what's it like, you know, having the loads management, you think it's helped your injuries around the team? How do you feel like it's helped you guys as a team? You know, because the, the, the tracking you guys, every step you take during practice, GPS, and, you know, there is a load management. Just curious if you feel like it's helped the team stay away from injuries. Are you talking like us personally or like how, like we go about scheduling practices? Both. I mean, what do you, what's your feeling on it? Yeah. I mean, um, Shoot, I don't know. I just play tackle. It's, uh, you know, obviously it's a long season. Um, you know, I think we are, our coaches and our, our open management really know uh, kind of, you know, when we got to go, we got to go and when it's time to back off because guys are banged up and the training room's filling up and, you know, we have to back off a little bit, then we have to do that. But when it's, you know, when it's time to put the work in, it's time to put the work in. So it's not like... Uh, you know, obviously, you know, some guys are a little different than others and some guys have earned, uh, you know, days off, time off, reps off, whatever it is. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to speak too much on other people's situations, but, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's, I think we've done it smartly. Um, but I think the key is that when it's time to go to work, this, uh, this group we have is very, uh, very professional and knows 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 when to get after it and you know when we're working we're working 
you know, that chips on your in your shoulder pad, that the, the RFID chip. The, are you guys are you aware of that? I mean, that every step you're taking is being monitored and, and counted. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm no, I, I, I guess not. You know, it's uh, there was a whole bunch of science into it, but you know, I didn't go to college for that, so it's, don't really have to <laughs> don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, you know, someone else sets a package plan, and you know, just go execute it. So it's uh, you know, is what it is, I guess. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. As a reminder to media, if you would like to ask a question, please utilize that raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Next question comes from SUNY. You may ask your question. Hi, Rob, good evening. Can you tell us a bit more about Andrew Whitworth and what he brings both on the field and what you learn from him off the field as well? And do you think you'll be doing this at 40 years old like him? Oh God, no. <laughs> no, I think it takes a special, uh, special type of human, which is exactly what Andrew is. I mean, he is a... Uh... You know, people always kind of comment that he's, you know, a coach on the field, which is which is very true. Uh, you know, he's got all the experience in the world, all the insight, little tips of how to go about blocking different guys, different schemes, and stuff like that. But when you actually turn on the film, you know, he's still he's still a top left tackle in the league at the age of forty. Like that doesn't like that's I haven't seen it. It's it's unheard of. You know, he's an absolute uh, freak. But that's just a a testament to his work ethic, his drive, his competitiveness, the way he goes about his business every day is the absolute benchmark in our room of how to do things. Um, and, uh, you know, couldn't be more appreciative of, of Andrew Whitworth, truly. He's, uh, he's a special guy and we're, uh, everyone in our room is, is definitely lucky to have him, have him around. Appreciate it, Rob. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. So Rob, currently we uh, don't have any uh, raised hands, but um, since this session does go till 5.15, we're gonna still wait around a little bit. Sure. <laughs> what time is it now? Right now it is 5.02. I'm in the running backs room and apparently they don't like clocks. <laughs> All right, we got one here. Next question comes from Julian. Julian, you may ask your question. Hey Rob, how's it going? Congrats on making the Super Bowl again. Um, I'll Great. give you a two-part question. So what can you draw from your first experience? And then the second part is how do you feel going against this front of Hubbard, Hendrickson, Hale, and all the other guys they got? Uh, yeah, no, with the, uh, obviously I haven't played in the Super Bowl before. You kind of know what to expect, the little differences of the game. Um, you know, it's not a home game. It's not an away game. It's a little bit of both. It's, uh, you know, the energy is real juiced up, half times longer. So just little, little things like that. You kind of, you know, you, you come to, ex like, you come to expect and you kind of know what's, know what's going on. But, you know, at the end of the day, it still is football. So, um, you know, we kind of bank on that, but. Yeah, you know, in terms of the Bengals, this is a this is one of the sounder fronts, obviously that well, we've played all year. Otherwise, you know, clearly they wouldn't be here. You know, they have excellent players that fit their role. Awesome. Um, it's going to be a real a real tough challenge for us. Um, but you know, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Again, as a reminder to media, if you'd like to ask a question, please utilize that raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Next question comes from Julian. Julian, you may ask your question. 
Yeah, so um, I'm curious how you your experience helps the other guys that haven't played before, and um, how are you looking forward to coming together as a group and trying to finish the job on Sunday? Uh, yeah, kind of what we were, I was talking about before. You know, it's um, just give little reminders to guys who, you know, maybe haven't been there about, you know, how to, you know, truly control, I guess, your energy levels uh, throughout, the, you know, this two-week process, you know, since our last game and kind of, you know, going about your process and keeping everyone kind of in line and on, you know, you know on task and, and focused in and, um, you know, but like I've said before, we have a very professional group, so uh, guys are locked in to what they have to do, but, you know, obviously, you know, with me and me and Andrew and uh, Joe, I think, uh, and Brian too, uh, haven't been there before, you know, everyone's kind of, uh, everyone who had questions asked them and then obviously gotten a little reminders from us, so that's kind of the, the way it's gone uh, these couple weeks, and if you could remind me of your second question, that'd be great. Yeah, so the second thing, I'll change it up, actually. So what impact is Andrew, has Andrew Whitworth had on you? Because obviously he's a veteran of mainstay. Is he a guy that everyone rallies around? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I've said this in previous interviews. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be here today without, you know, without Andrew Whitworth. He's a, uh, you know, he's a special guy. He's taught me so many things about being a professional, being a tackle, being a football hey, player. Hey, Van, how's it going? Hey, Van, how's it going? Congrats on making the Super Bowl yesterday. Sorry about that. He was on another one. Um, again, we're still waiting for – sorry. Didn't like my answer. Yeah. Uh, we're still waiting for um, for some raised hands, but um, none. if I don't receive any in the next couple minutes, uh, we'll try to wrap this up a little early. Julian, you may ask your question. So how have Odell Beckham and Von Miller and some of the other new additions impacted this team going from uh, last year to this year? Obviously, Stafford's a big one, too. But I was more curious about the in-season change, how you guys really had the mentality that you were fully going for it. Uh, yeah, I know those guys have been great. You know, they're obviously great players in their own right, and they've came in and absolutely bought into the culture and everything we're trying to do here. And you know, they're just going to work every day, and, you know, they definitely brought a lot of young guys up with them, which is, a, you know, a true measurement of the leader. Thank you. Yeah. Next question comes from media outlet Arena Four. You may ask your question. Hey, greetings from Budapest, Hungary. There wasn't a real standout player in the Bengals defensive line during the regular season. They are just great as a unit. What do you think? What is their greatest strength? Uh, you know, I think you kind of hit on it right there. Uh, and I, I would disagree with you. They don't have a standout player or a couple guys, but. Um... I think they're just overall they play very good, solid to, you know, team defense, and that is you know they've they've been formidable all season, and they've uh, you know 100% stepped up in the playoffs, and you know made the plays that were out there to go ahead and you know close games out, which is just a true testament to their, to their defense. Um, the guys play their roles, they play them very well, and you know one-on-one matchups are you know are are going to be a long day. 
Thanks a lot and good luck for the weekend. Yeah, thanks. Next question comes from Daniel Popper. Daniel, you may ask your question. Hey, Rob. Um, just talking to a lot of the offensive linemen this week, you know, one common theme has been that you guys are really trying to win this one for Witt, mm -hmm. just where he's at in his career. The fact that, he, you know, how, how much does he talk about, you know, how badly he wants this? And, and why do you feel like you guys are, you know, sort of have that collective mindset of, you know, we want to get this one for, for him, considering where he is in his career? Because uh, Witt's never going to ask for things for himself, but he's going to go about the, kind of the way he goes about it and the way he, you know, the way he goes about wanting to get this thing done. And it's, uh, you know, to play, you know, 16 years and for to, for all of us to say we had a influence on, you know, helping Witt get a Super Bowl, it's, it's that would that would be, you know, unbelievable. Um, it's just how much Witt's, Witt has given all of us technique, memories in the old line room, right on the practice field, watching him, you know, go about his Hall of Fame career. It's, uh, you know, anything to help, you know, that we can help him out and, you know, give back what he's already given to us, you know, tenfold. It would just be, you know, an unbelievable uh, cap on the season. And then just to follow up, this might be a little tough to nail down for you, but like what's the most important thing that Witt has taught you in your time together? Yeah, no, you're right. That is tough. Um, or one, one, one important thing. It's fine, but uh, one one important thing. Just it's very fundamental, but it's it's truly how to you know how hard do you think you're working, and how you know when you look yourself in the mirror, whether it's in the off season, in the season, rehab, training, whatever it is. You know, are you kind of lying to yourself, thinking like, oh, I I went out and did everything I could. Um, cause he is the gold standard of, you know, hard work, you know, dedication to the team, dedication to himself. Um, and that's, uh, that's something he'll always be a, a you know, a benchmark for. And, you know, when you think you've, you know, done enough in a day, you got to kind of think about, you know, like, you know, would our leader, would Andrew be satisfied with this or would he go get that little bit extra? And uh, that's something I think a lot of guys have bought into, and it's a uh, that's just one of the great things that Wood has given to uh, to all of us. So you remember specific moments where you sort of stopped for the day and looked yourself in the mirror and were like, "Nah, Witt probably want me to go do one more thing." Uh, well, we did a lot of our off-season training with him uh, when he's around, and so you know you get done with the workout, and whether it's a you know kind of a grinder or not, and you know he's kind of looking at you, giving you know without saying anything, kind of giving you a little head nod and. Uh, you know, it's just other guys bringing up and be like, all right, like one more round, let's go again. Like, let's get another sprint on the bike. Let's up this, let's do this, let's do that. Um, just cause you could tell he just, he wants to push guys to let them know that they are capable of, of you know, they are capable of more. And, you know, he, uh, he wants guys to figure that out for himself. And then when they need, need a push, then, you know, he's, he's right there helping guys out. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.